Kelsey, your fifth WNBA season was cut short due to injury, but it was a spectacular season before that. What will you remember the most from this year? Uh, I think what I'll remember most about my season is the adversity I faced. Um, just when you think you got it, so it was a lot more ways to go. Um, I think for me, it was about making sure I felt myself getting better. And I thought it would just be through like, you know, playing games and getting better. Um, little did I know is it's about a little bit of everything. Um, changing leadership as coaching, um, changing leadership as GM, um, a young team, uh, trying to fight, you know, the adversity you face when it comes to the rest of the league, uh, the goals you set for yourself, um, and it seems like you're close and you're not. So um, I, I think I'll remember the adversity I faced and the ability to get through it without cutting yourself short. Uh, you know, a lot of times when bad things happen, the first thing you want to do is run and kind of like bog down and expect everybody to feel sorry for you. Um, I think for me, it was about making sure I kept my head up in every situation. Um, even when I felt like it shouldn't have been the way it was. Uh, it's just about facing that adversity and understanding that it kind of like made me who I am. How did this season feel different from your previous four? Uh, uh, our team was pretty young, so I, that made things a little bit more different. Um, and they made us young in a, a, such so many great ways. Um, it's just, you know, when you don't have time, it's on your hands. There's so much more that you want to get done that you don't have time for. Um, so I would say that this year was, I, mean, I had to lean on my leadership, you know, from the other people that I played with, as well as the rookies in communication a lot. So I think that was the biggest difference. Scored 34 points against Dallas in July. Can you take me back to that night and, and what led to your season high? Uh, man, it's just, I mean, any, any player that, you know, wants to play the, play the game at a, at a high level and be, you know, elite, you got to be able to compete against the league. Um, so, you know, names or, you know, with other people that you're playing, uh, just kind of like settle into a rhythm where it's like, you got to find that rhythm that makes you comfortable. Um, I think I settled into a rhythm that, you know, I could, you know, utilize my advantages on the team we were playing. And I think for me, it was just all about staying in tune to what they was giving me. Um, they give me this, I take that, you know, I take that, I do, you know, they do this. So for me, it was all about that game, just making sure I stayed tuned the whole 40 minutes. Where do you think you made the biggest strides on the floor this season? Uh, um, I would say from, you know, utilizing, you know, both hands, um, and then being able to like finish through contact a little bit better. Um, I think my shot selection got a little bit better as far as like understanding and valuing possession. Um, I wasn't the best, but compared to where I was, you know, I think I made some pretty big strides. Uh, and then I think for me, my biggest jump was just mentally not letting anything deter me from what was important for me or what was important to me. Um, a lot of times in life you get bogged down by what everything else is going on um, and what everybody else is doing. And I think for me, I'm always big on you, you spend a lot of time comparing yourself to others, you're going to lose. So it was just about making sure mentally that I stayed in tune to my work and my process. And that, that's, how, that's how I plan to live out the rest of my life. You also set a career high in assists this season. Was that a point of emphasis for you coming into the year? Oh, for sure. Like, I feel like my passing can kind of be underrated because you know, uh, with the scoring and shooting and you know, taking a lot of shots sometimes, but um, I, I take pride in making sure everybody is like, you know, filling the game just as much as I do. Um, and so when you make, you know, reads and you, you know, get into a position where you got to make things happen for your team, that includes passing, that includes making sure everybody getting a shot. Uh, Tori hit one, let's make sure she hit two, three. Um, you know what I'm saying? Or, List on the block, let's make sure we get her the ball because she just hit the last four. You know, just understanding those reads, understanding um, the time of the game and, you know, what's needed to you know to be done to kind of be, be a winner. How much motivation did you take from not being named to the All-Star team? Ah, <laughs> oh, man. I can't honestly tell you, like, not making an All-Star team was kind of like, I don't know, I think for me it kind of, put in perspective my journey and my career 
uh, my entire life has kind of been like this, you know, you know, I always got to do a little bit more to be kind of like, you know, expected to like be known for certain things. And I think when that situation happened, I can't lie to you. I think I was emotional because of the work that you thought you was putting in. <laughs> and it's like, you feel like you got ways to go. And it may not, they may not be the case, but any player or any competitor, it's like, dang, I'm still far away. Like, you know, that's how you feel. Like, that's when you thought, you know, you could be on a level and be on the same platform with the best of the best in the league. It's like, I know you kind of feel like, and it's not saying you get down on yourself about it. It's like, you got ways to go to kind of be recognized. And it kind of sucks. You feel like you got to do more. Um, but for me, it wasn't about taking taking a chance to like show the world that I should have been um, or, you know, what any, anybody has to say about it. It was just about making sure that I held myself to a higher standard. You know, you, I mean, apparently you're not there yet, so you got to keep going, right? So, I mean, that, that's kind of how I felt about it. Um, I might not have any ill will towards, you know, the people that made decisions, the people that made it. Um, the all-star team, it was just about making sure that I, I held myself to a higher standard because you always won't be held to a higher standard, I feel like. I mean, just in my case. <laughs> you mentioned how young this team was. What was it like playing with so many rookies and what were your <laughs> overall impressions of this rookie class? Man, the one thing I could say about our rookies is that they brought a set of life out of me that kind of like went dormant for a while when I first got into the league. Um, it was just like, I don't know, it was like, I, I, we was the teachers and they was the kids at like a preschool from, from like a standpoint of like them not knowing certain things. But on the flip side, it's like there was the teachers and we was the, we was the, the kids when it came to like living your life and understand and recognize that it's okay to like hang loose and have fun. And when you had, get into a profession, sometimes you lose sight of purpose and vision. And so our rookies kind of like brought the life out of, out of us, I think. And we, I grew to appreciate them on so many different levels because they didn't want nothing but to like understand the professional world. But in doing that, they also had fun with it. I mean, it was, this was the most fun I think I've had in a while, um, actually since I've been in the league. And so the rookies brought a lot of life out of me. Um, on the floor, obviously I enjoy playing um, with them, all five or six or seven of them. But uh, uh, I think, I mean, time just went on our hands. And I think I, I applied them to so many levels because we, you know, they took what was taught to them and did the best they could as far as utilizing it and, you know, and applying it to the game. And um, I think each one of them are going to have great careers. I really do. Danielle was talking about how you've grown as a vocal leader this season. Do you think having so many young players around you pushed you in that respect? And do you feel like you made strides vocally? Honestly, it had less to do with the rookies this time around. It was just more about my preseason and my off season as far as like understanding where I liked. Um, I like to call myself a realist about where I'm better at and what I'm good at and what I'm not. And I'm not heavy on talking, but um, communication and being able to communicate within my team and within the organization just goes to show how much you know, how much can be done, how much can be accomplished just by talking. Um, and it took a while because, like I said, it's just, I kind of just let everybody do what they're going to do. But um, in this instance and where I'm at in my career, uh, communication is important. And, you know, being able to lead people by communicating is always a good thing. It's effective. I know a big focus for you will be rehab and recovery, but <sighs> what are your plans overall for the off season? Uh, Train, obviously, you know, get back to where I need to be body wise and my foot. Um, I know I'm going to like do some, you know, marketing stuff with the team and be around Indy and, you know, the WBA for a while. And I think for me, it's just about, you know, taking this time to kind of like hang loose and enjoy where I'm at in life. So that's the, that's the plan. I might be on the beach somewhere. Might, if my foot allows me. Uh, but yeah, I just plan on making sure I'm living the right life for myself, um, whatever that is. That's all. That's all I want for myself to be living right. Do you have a favorite moment from last season? Uh, I would say, you know, Coach Lowe's first game, his first game and us being able to win for him. Um, it was kind of like you expect, I expected this like moment where it's like, dang, like, we about to shock the world, like, and you know, like, it's not to say that we didn't. Um, obviously, you know, we didn't win a lot of games, but it was like, 
it felt good to see him happy and to see us happy from you know we made him happy by playing our hearts out for him um, and I think for us it was just making sure that he felt that um, and when it was all said and done like that celebration that that moment that we had that we had to cherish was just like it was us recognizing that our body of work um, it made sense and you know we it, it, we paved the way for the fact that for him to have a good first first game as a head coach so it was a great feeling.